And then we come on to this idea of significance. So it, it tends to happen more in the physical sciences where people talk about results being significant and they just use it as a turn of phrase without quantifying it. But actually, statistically, it has a meaning. So we can't really throw it around um, because it's, it's, it's actually a threshold probability. And what I mean by that, here, it's written here, the probability at and below which I reject the null hypothesis. So I'm just saying that now the probability that the null hypothesis, uh, i.e. there's no difference, explains my data. If that probability gets below a certain threshold, then I've got to, uh, uh, I'm convinced I've got to reject that null hypothesis. I've got to reject the idea there's no difference and start looking for some other way of explaining my data. So that's why I've paraphrased it to say the probability at or below which I'm prompted to reconsider the null hypothesis as explanatory for my data. Okay, the probability is now so small, I think I can't use the null hypothesis to explain the differences I'm seeing. I'm going to have to come up with something different. And um, sometimes, sometimes we use the uh, letter alpha, the Greek letter alpha, as a symbol for um, significance. Although there is some confusion because there's actually two, two different things in statistics that people tend to use alpha for. So you have to be a bit careful. But um, yeah, sometimes it will be called alpha. And that significance level is something that you choose. It's not something that's calculated from the data. But it's a choice that you as the researcher get to make and have to make. Um, because it's that threshold at which you're going to say, null hypothesis doesn't explain the differences I'm seeing. Uh, these differences are real. I need an alternative hypothesis. However, I, I, I say it's, it's up to you to decide. The most generally, um, a significance level of 0 0.05 or 5% is chosen. I'm not quite sure historically why that is, but it is the case. And, and quite often, um, you will end up referencing to that value because that's the standard threshold. Um, however, you can argue otherwise. And because this value is chosen by you, just because you don't get a significant result, as in your p-value in your measurements, is not less than 0.05. That doesn't mean that there is no effect. It just means that it hasn't reached your threshold criteria. But you should define this value um, at the outset of your analysis. You, you don't look at your results and then say, ah, oh, I'm going to choose my significance level, having seen the, having seen the answer. Because then, remarkably, everyone would have significant results. But then there's this, this other thing that has a, a variety of terms, and I, I'll use the term effect size or practical significance. So you could, if you collect enough data, you can always find a difference between two data sets. And you can always find that it's statistically significant if you measure enough times. So if you measure something a million times, the, um, you might be able to spot, I don't know, a, a nanometer difference um, in people's height. But then you ask yourself, is it of any practical significance? Clinically, you say, is it of any clinical significance? Uh, one example I had last year was someone measuring overjet. And the question was, well, what's the clinical significance? How how much over change in overjet um, from an appliance, uh, wearing an appliance is actually of any practical significance. So yes, I might be able to detect half a millimetre change, but is that important for me or my patient? Well, probably not. However, if I can see a five millimetre change, wow, that's, that's of some significance to, um, to me clinically. So 
again, this is something that you define. It's what, what's the size of your effect that you really want to see or you're interested in or makes a difference. And so it's determined by the purpose of the measurement and the context. 